Hi, this is Vincent with SCA Iowa and another introductory video for the Society for Creative Anachronism. The SCA is a worldwide historic recreation organization dedicated to recreating all the best aspects of the Middle Ages. Anything that was made, used, consumed before 1600, we have friends who enjoy learning about it, exploring it, trying it, teaching others about it. It's a way to explore history hands-on. And in this introductory video, we're talking about some of the different topics that are represented within the arts and sciences. All of those things that people made, used, and consumed before 1600. There is so much to talk about, I can't cover it all within a reasonable amount of time, but we can try and make a start at it. When we're talking about the arts and sciences, again, we're talking about all of the things that people made, used, and consumed. Anything that touched people's lives or that they touched back in time, then we're talking about reproducing that, learning about it, recreating it. Sometimes we're doing this using uh, pieces that inspire us from the past because there are a lot of things that have survived. The cool thing is, is that so many museums are putting their collections online now that we can find examples to inspire us easier than ever before. In addition to this, there are so many publications that have been coming out in recent years that provide us with information that we as historic reenactors need in order to recreate different things. There's so much out there to inspire us. Now, sometimes these are things that we do with the actual tools of the past, the tools that they would have used. Sometimes we use modern tools in order to just make the historic item but however you choose to do it, we're recreating all the stuff that we can find in that medieval town. Anything that touched people's lives or that they touched. So there's a whole lot to talk about. Now we can break this into kind of broad categories to talk about. So things like metalworking, that's easy enough to understand. There are many items made from metal that have survived being handed down from person to person or being dug out of the ground by metal detectorists. And so many of these things can inspire us. Now obviously there are things like blacksmithing that we work with. And blacksmiths are, uh, you can get to see them on some interesting programs on TV, and we do stuff like that as well. But beyond that, there's also finer work, uh, what you could call bright metal work, uh, things like metal casting, etching, engraving, making jewelry. All these things have also survived being handed down or being dug out of the ground, and we can use them as examples to recreate different things, to inspire us to learn about the past through these objects. Obviously, there are a lot of things that were made out of wood in the past as well. And it's one of those things that connects a lot to a lot of the other hobbies that people may have today. So yes, we can make things like uh, weapons out of wood or buildings or boxes or cabinetry, joinery but also tools that people would have used being constructed out of wood, whether it's a shovel or block printing blocks or a weaving tool. There's so many different things that were made out of wood, and a lot of these things can inspire us to work on these objects as well. Leather is one of those materials that, again, goes far back in human history. And there are many useful things that can be constructed from leather. Obviously, using things like leather pouches becomes a kind of second nature to us when we're participating in the SCA. But also things like shoes and gloves and scabbards. But also drinking vessels like leather jacks or book covers or penner cases. There's all sorts of things where leather is involved at least part way in the construction. The cool thing is is that leather working tools are fairly inexpensive in order to get basic pieces of equipment. So it's fairly easy to get started on things like that. Costuming is one of the arts and science areas that touches almost every member of the SCA. In fact, I would say it touches every member of the SCA because we have the requirement of an attempt at historic clothing when you're participating at events. Now, for some people, the costuming is just very simple production of tunics or tunic dresses or very basic clothing in order to meet those minimum requirements to participate. 
For other people, they push the envelope and create walking works of art, recreations of clothing worn in the past by the high status individuals. And this is definitely neat to look at and inspiring to watch these people work. The fiber arts would be closely related to costuming because obviously the costuming is made out of fibers, made out of cloth. The fiber arts in this sense is going to include even down to making the raw materials itself. You could start out with raw wool or flax and spin these fibers into thread. From there, you could weave it into cord or narrow bands or even cloth. But beyond that, the fiber arts is also going to include decorative arts. So things like embroidery to make those garments even more spectacular. <clears throat> now, the fiber arts, again, fairly inexpensive to get started with. Pottery, there's a little more of a cash outlay to get involved with. But there are so many surviving bits of pottery to inspire us. So many surviving examples, either in pieces or all together, so that we can recreate specific things from different points in history. If you can't afford to do pottery, which maybe you can, maybe you can't, but there are also potters out there who will sell you pottery to match your persona or your style, and they usually do so at a fairly reasonable price. Calligraphy and illumination is also one of those things that's very inexpensive to get started with if you're using basic starter tools. Now we use calligraphy and illumination in very interesting ways within the SCA, including for award scrolls, where we present people with recognitions of their accomplishments, where the crown will commission a, a scroll to be made by a scribe. And these works of art get hung up in people's homes and cherished for a long time. Now, you can take this further and make the pigments yourself or make the brushes, make the pens, and you can push the envelope as far as that goes too. And there are, as a never ending list of different examples that have survived in books and manuscripts around the world to inspire you to go further. Glass working is one of those weird things that happens in certain groups like ours in Iowa. Our Iowa group has a lot of lamp workers in it who like to make glass beads in small vessels. Glass working also includes things like stained glass work and glass blowing. Again, a little more expensive to get involved with those. But sometimes you can see activities like this available at events that you can join in on for a small fee. The Bardic Arts are one of those things that are very inexpensive to get started with because you basically have all the tools you need right now. Within the SCA, the Bardic Arts may include things like storytelling or writing songs or performing songs or even just sitting around the campfire and singing songs with your uh, fellow SCA members at events. Cooking is something that everybody's going to love in the SCA because it feeds us and there are an amazing variety of surviving medieval cookbooks to inspire us to cook medieval meals and items to serve at feasts or even just to our friends at events. Dance is another one of those things that you'll see at events and a fun thing to participate in and fairly inexpensive. Now, the amount of belly dancing has decreased over the years within our area of the SCA, but there is still quite a bit of court dancing that's available. And the nice thing to have along with your dance is some music. Now, we can't always have live musical performances at these dances, but if you enjoy playing a period instrument, then there's usually a place for you to perform music at these events or just to have fun playing your instrument uh, for a crowd. Other styles of performances include things like I've seen puppet shows or plays or different types of staged uh, productions. Just again, anything that you can imagine happening in that medieval city are things that you can see being done and explored 
at SCA events, anything that was made, used, or consumed, we have friends who enjoy exploring it. So no matter what you enjoy exploring out of history, there are things that you can do in the SCA to further your knowledge and experience. There's always another challenge out there. There's other, always another thing that you can do and try. There's always something more to learn. You can learn by attending an event or a local meeting, or you can check out some more videos in this series introducing the Society for Creative Anachronism to you.